Do you know that hair loss can manifest differently based on your gender? Hi, this is Dr. Angeline Yong here, consultant dermatologist, start specializing in hair disorders. Today in this video, let's talk about the differences between male and female pattern hair loss. Now, no matter whether you are male or female, all our hairs actually go through cycles of growth throughout our lifetime. Progressively, this is known as anagen, where the hair grows in the summer phase and grows for 5 to 7 years on scalp hair, and then it goes through a shed and rest cycle known as catagen and telogen respectively. And all hairs naturally go through that progressive waves throughout our lifetime. This is very normal. However, there are different types of hair loss that we will see being encountered in our lifetime, and this can be broadly categorized into two main formats, basically scarring alopecia and non-scarring alopecia. Now, scarring alopecia is less common, but under this broad category, we have conditions such as traction alopecia, where if you like to pull and tie your hair back in tight ponytails or buns, you can give rise to progressive hair loss as well in these areas where there's tight tension pulling on the hair roots. Other conditions, for example, include lichen planar pilaris, frontal fibrosing alopecia, just to name a few. Now, the main category we should be focused on in this discussion below will be that of non-scarring alopecia. And in this big category, we have the very well-known androgenetic alopecia, which is divided into male and female pattern hair loss respectively. We also have alopecia areata, which is a non-scarring form of alopecia that affects individuals, and this is actually non-gender specific. It is non-scarring by nature, can be recovered, however, it can be quite disfiguring when it's very progressive and extensive. This is actually autoimmune by nature. We also have a condition known as telogen effluvium, which can be caused by various factors such as illness, dengue fever for example, post-COVID, even post-major weight loss and dieting as well. And telogen effluvium, while it is actually very well known, has actually multifactorial causes leading to it. Now in the ensuing video below, we will be focused on androgenetic alopecia and the differences between male and female pattern hair loss. Okay, so now in this subsequent segment, we'll talk about gender-specific hair loss, namely male and female pattern hair loss. Let's start with the men first. So in male pattern hair loss, about 50% of male patients will experience hair loss by the time they are 50. And this can start as early as the time that you hit puberty in 18, 19 years of age. So in this more aggressive early forms of hair loss, we can even have a grade 1 or grade 2 normal Hamilton classification level of hair loss by the time you're 20 or 21. So it's important to understand this and start intervening early, especially if you want to save your crowning glory for later years. So why this happens is principally because male pattern hair loss predominantly is driven by testosterone production. And the moment you hit puberty, testosterone levels start to rise. And it is testosterone that is converted by an enzyme known as 5-alpha reductase to dihydrotestosterone that gives rise to this progressive thinning. So this progressive thinning can start off in two main areas. In one form, it starts off in the anterior frontal hairline and gives rise to bifrontal temporal recessions and you develop an M-shaped pattern of hair loss that starts off in the front. This can progressively advance and progress over the entire crown to affect the entire top of your scalp. In another format, it can predominantly be what we consider a vertex-predominant pattern of presentation and this opens up as a circular patch of baldness at the very top of your scalp. And basically, these two are the main start points and it can merge over time to ensue a whole corridor and the entire crown. Normal Hamilton classification basically classifies male pattern hair loss into grade 1 to grade 7. So men can basically start presenting at various times in their lifetime, in their 20s, 30s, at different grades of severity. It is of course important that if you have an early onset male pattern hair loss, that you start intervention early so that you stem this progressive miniaturization that's happening. So in female pattern hair loss, it's not quite as straightforward as our male counterparts. So as mentioned, we have lower levels of plasma testosterone and lower levels of 5-alpha reductase. But women can be affected in different severities due to different hormonal issues as well. For example, there is a well-known entity known as polycystic ovarian syndrome where women produce actually maybe a higher level of androgen relative to female hormones. And in this group of women, they will present with certain features such as increased acne, unwanted hair growth over the chin and jawline area, and also an earlier onset of hair loss. And this female pattern hair loss may look more androgen specific, where they may also have a more frontal pattern of thinning, similar to male counterparts as well. 
Also, women nearer to menopause can experience an acceleration of female pattern hair loss. And this is because, again, nearing menopause, your estrogen and progesterone levels subsequently fall, and then there is a relative excess of testosterone, not because there is more male testosterone being produced, but because it continues to be produced at the same levels while female hormone levels are progressively declining. It is this relative imbalance that gives rise to an acceleration in the presentation of female pattern hair loss. So women who may not have experienced hair loss in the earlier years may start to see progressive thinning happening from the ages of 45 to 55 respectively, and there can be sudden shifts that give rise to a sudden acceleration even in the amount of shedding. Now, how do we treat hair loss? I like to divide hair loss options into basically topical format, which is application. You can also look at oral medications or supplement category, and then finally external treatments. So under these three subdivisions, we have various options that can target male and female pattern hair loss equally well. So, of course, a well-known ingredient would be that of minoxidil. This can be topically applied in the for formulations of 2% to 5% and varying solutions of foam. Foam is usually non-alcohol based and hence is usually less irritating. But the problem with topical application is that of compliance. And now, minoxidil can also be delivered orally as well. And so we have oral minoxidil and you can give varying amounts of minoxidil on a daily basis. Typically in females, we will go on a lower end dose because there's increased risk of peripheral hair growth such as unwanted facial and body hair growth with an oral formulation and in male patients, they can usually tolerate and accept a higher dosage of minoxidil. Minoxidil is really effective because it will block um, the energon hairs from entering the shed cycle and also fosters an increased return of hairs into the hair growth cycle. So it helps to increase the quantity of hairs over time. Now, the other very commonly utilized ingredient is that of a DHT blocker. A DHT blocker is very useful, especially when dealing with male and female pattern hair loss, in particular, male pattern hair loss. But we also use it increasingly in certain cases in female pattern hair loss as well. So these are well-known ingredients such as finasteride or even dutasteride, which is actually uh, superior to finasteride as a double DHT blocker. Now, finasteride and dutasteride are typically delivered orally, but are also available in topical formulations if you have them made as well. So if you're worried about systemic side effects such as loss of libido, etc., you can also consider a topical formulation of DHT blockers. Now, in women, we typically don't use DHT blockers as first line. Sometimes there are older classifications of drugs that are known as antiandrogens, and this can come in the form of a birth control pill with an antiandrogen, like cyproterone acetate, which is available in some combined pills such as Diane 35 or Yasmin. Um, you can also give a, a, a drug known as spironolactone, and spironolactone is an antiandrogen that is not actually a hormone in itself, and this also helps women with female pattern hair loss. Now, other than that, they, you can of course consider other options such as low level laser treatment or low level light therapy. This is very useful, typically in a red light spectrum to help to foster increased metabolism and increased hair growth. And it's beneficial for most forms of hair loss, not just male and female pattern hair loss, but for telogen effluvium as well. Other than light therapies, people may also consider other things, for example, microneedling, there are other laser treatments, and also even treatments such as exosomes at the moment that are also being purported to be very useful on hair growth as well. Finally, we also have surgical hair restoration techniques, namely strip harvesting or FUT, and also follicular unit extraction, which is punch grafting. Now, in this technique, it's basically to restore an area of pre-existing hair loss. It does not prevent ongoing hair loss. Hence, it's important to understand where it fits in the entire regime. Surgical hair restoration is not the end point. It doesn't mean that after doing hair restoration that there will be no further hair loss. You do have to manage it either topically or with oral formulations or even at least low-level laser treatment over your lifetime if you're talking about male and female pattern hair loss. Surgical hair restoration helps to really improve the area of loss but does not stem the underlying medical driver for your hair loss. All right, there you have it folks, the differences or the key differences between male and female pattern hair loss. It is important to first seek help and understand the form of hair loss you have and not to entirely self-diagnose it because sometimes it is more complicated than just male or female pattern hair loss. So it's important to work with a practitioner to work out what are the key drivers of your form of hair loss. It can be not just one problem, but maybe two or three problems coexisting at the same time. And it's important to target these various pillars or aspects to get optimized results so that you really can regain your crowning glory. So if you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow us in our channel for more content.